Have you got some brick laying to do around the house and you're not sure how to go about it? Come along with us and we'll show you how to do it professionally, quick and easy. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got with me George and Giuseppe. Hey. Hey. Um, I've asked these guys to come and give me a hand uh, and they've uh, volunteered their services and I really appreciate that. And today we're going to brick lay a shrine. And so we live on 37 acres here and it's a quite a beautiful, peaceful property. And um, it's a great place to meditate and just, uh, you know, connect. Uh, connect with your soul and to help do that I'm going to put up a shrine of the Prince of Peace so even though it's just a statue the image itself is for me very peaceful and it helps me to meditate uh, in such a beautiful environment and so I really do thank you guys for coming to help me uh, we're going to show you the full process on how to do brick lane uh, it is a very simple process we're going to break it down to steps um, it's only a very small project um, but I'm still going to set it up like you would do for a bigger project so over the years I've bricklayed a few times and watching bricklayers when they're building my houses and so I've learned the, the trick of the trade and, and Giuseppe has been in the industry for a while he was a concreter uh, and now he is an estimator and we will be doing a video in the future on estimating and I've got a project coming up it's not a huge one but big enough to estimate because it will be in the thousands to make this project looking forward to be involved with that one Musa so am I George also has a background in the building trade and was an electrician for a period and uh, and he does a lot of renovations innovations himself. So I can see in the future that this place will become like a retreat, a place for people to come and pray uh, or to meditate. Uh, and around two and a half years ago, I made a shrine of Our Lady. And so I'm going to mimic that here. First, we're going to start off just by grabbing some sand uh, and placing this area, screed it. And then we're going to put uh, two slabs. There are 900 by 450. So we can make a 900 by 900 slab. All right, thanks, George. If you could just place it there for me. Okay, so just got one bucket here. That should be enough for now. So I've just spread out the sand. Now I'll just use the level. I'll compact it and make sure I do get a level. I'll just screed that off. Thanks, George. Definitely need the sand. Great. A little bit Yes, please. That's fantastic. Thanks, Giuseppe. So when you're screening, it's actually better to do the parameters first and then fill in the middle. Um, but I'm doing it this way because it's only a very small area. I'm just using the level to compact it. Now, this is a fairly old level. So I'm happy to do that, <laughs> but usually don't give your levels this much torture. Just using the corner of the level, turning it slightly and just shaving off what I don't want. Just a little bit low here. So I'm going to ask Giuseppe if I can have another bucket. That's it. Beautiful. Just a little bit here. Yep. And a bit more, a bit more. It was a bit low. I might have to use most of it, eh? Now, to stop this sand from eroding, because it is important to stop that as well, uh, you can put some cement on the sides, on the pavers, and that'll stop the sand from actually spilling out when it rains. Okay, so now I'm just going to use a bigger level so I can just get all those highs and lows out. Now, it does have handles on this. This is a Stanley Fat Max. Um, I do like levels with handles because I do like to screed with the handles. So this ground here has a slope in it and it's done purposely uh, just to drain it. So when you've got structure, you try not to have water sitting around that structure because it will damage the footings. Uh, and this slab is like a footing, uh, even though it's a very lightweight, there's not much uh, weight on this slab. So uh, that's why I'm doing it this way. If it was a heavier structure, I would have concreted here and made a thick slab. Okay, we're done. All we do now is just put the slabs on. Okay, so the guys are gonna place it on the sand for me. And I've made a mark on the ground. That is beautiful. You're doing well, guys. Beautiful. You guys are doing well. Look at that. So now I'm just going to take the excess sand off the sides. I'm going to do this very carefully. 
George, can you continue around the slab for me? Okay, so now while George is doing that, I'm gonna mark for the pier. So basically what I'm gonna do here is halve the slab, so that's a 900. So I'm gonna make it 450. Uh, the actual pier is gonna be 475 mil. 215. Double check that. All right, so that's our pier there. So that will be a brick pier that will hold the actual statue. Okay, now we'll just set the profiles to help us brick lay. So what I'm doing first is marking the gauges on this profile. So I'll just turn it to a clean side. And so the brick itself is 162 mil roughly. It does taper, um, so I'm using a 10 mil gauge. And so that's 172. And then we just mark the rest. 344. 516. 516. 688. 688. 860. 860? Yep. Beautiful, round number, I like it. So pencil's pretty good, but it's very light. So you can actually use a texter but it's gotta be a very fine texture. You only need to mark one. You don't need to mark them all. You can if you want, but in this here, because it's such a small area, it's easier just to use a level on it. So we just place the profile on the outer marks. Okay, so now you just put a piece of timber here, ram that in the ground so it doesn't move. And in this case here, I'm gonna use an F clamp. Okay, so I'm just leveling the post. All right, so we've got the profile going this way. Now we're gonna go the opposite direction. All right. Okay, that's pretty close. Can you hold that for a sec? I've got the quick grip. Okay, just put that one on. And so now I'll just go around with the level. This is looking really good. We're almost done. Can you just move it up just this way, the bottom, just uh, the, the timber, only about 20 mil that way, away from you. Yeah, just up there. George, can you straighten the bottom out for me? Stop there. Yeah, that's lined up. Okay, so it took a bit of work, but the profiles are all in and they're all on the mark and it's looking really good. So now we'll make the mix of cement and we'll start brick laying. And so the cement I do use is Blue Circle. I find them to be the best quality cement on the market here in Sydney, in Australia. Um, and this is off-white to go with an off-white sand. So uh, it, that'll match the brick color better. So you need to have the sand with clay in it. So it's a bricky sand. Uh, the reason it's got clay in there because it makes the, uh, the sand what they call fat. And so fat meaning, so when you put it on the trowel, it's easy to use and easy to apply. But also, uh, I use bicol. Not many people are using this these days, but the bicol, it's kind of like a soap. And um, so you just put only one or two lids in on a wheelbarrow load, and, uh, and it makes it really malleable. It makes it very easy to use instead of dry and hard. And that's what you do when you're bricklaying. You've got to have it where it actually does uh, have a bit of like a creaminess to it. Okay, so I'm gonna to do today a four to one mix for the mud. Um, it actually is, I found the best combination. Some people put a little less than that, some people a little more. Okay, so what we do uh, to make sure it's the right ratio, the right quantity, I just cut the bag in half. You grab the center of the bag and you pull it upwards like this. Okay, so now you've got half. So now what I'll do is use half a bag to 40 kilos of sand. So this is a 20 kilo bag. And so now it's just been halved to 10 kilo. Okay, so now what we do is just put in some sand. Don't put it all. Just mix a little bit of sand. Just spread it around for me, George. Yep, all the way around. That's it, beautiful. And just put a little bit of cement in there. Okay, a bit more. All the way around. Beautiful. You can throw the rest in if you want. Okay, beautiful, doing well, George. And last one. Okay, so what we do, just mix it all in. Make sure you get to the bottom. And you've got to get rid of all that sand color. 
Okay, so Giuseppe, can I ask you if you can do that for me? Yep. My old man. You know, they say that the Italians came, saw, and they concreted, right? But I'm sure the Lebanese did the same. You will find there's a little bit of sand on the bottom. So what I tend to do is just dig that back up and just give that scrape on the bottom and you'll see some of the colour come back up. Oops, sorry guys. <coughs> Good catch. So now I just make a hole in the centre. So then you just tip the water. Okay, you don't put too much water in, but you've got to put enough. So I'm just going to put my knee against the barrow here just to stop it from moving and just collapse all the sides there and it's, my jeans are now wet. So I'm only just going to put uh, two lids. You don't put much of it. Sometimes you need less than that, sometimes you need more than that. Okay, so see the way Giuseppe's shoveling through this and just mixing? You can see it falling off the shovel. Now that's what you call fat. Okay, we've got the mud board down, we've got some mud on the board. Um, now I've got two different trowel sizes. Uh, I've got a large and a small. Now the large is good for big runs, but uh, this is a very tight area, so I'm gonna use a small one. So first, I'll just put a little bit of mud just on this parameter here because this is the profile that I've marked. Okay, so I'll just spread it a bit. All right, and I'll just grab the first brick. So just make sure there's no chips anywhere, uh, and then just place it down over the, using the profile and your mark, let it just sink in. That's it there. Okay, so I'm gonna hit that down in a minute. I won't hit it down yet. I just want that to sink in, because these are very heavy bricks, as I said. All right, so this brick's got a, a crack in it, but that's not a problem. We're going to actually repair that by putting a little bit of mud on either side and use that as a join. All right, so now you just butt that up to each other. This side's just up a little bit. I'll just hit it down. That's perfect. Okay. So just let that dry, leave all the cement around the parameter, don't clean that off, just let it dry. The reason being, because they're heavy, if you, as you put the next course on, it's gonna want to push the other ones down, so we don't want that. I'll do this outer one. And one thing I haven't done yet, is I actually fill in this gap. I don't have any marks on this profile, so I'm gonna to have to go off this one. So just, I'll first just place it down. So much easier to make this with a profile. When I was making the other one, I did struggle a bit because you have to continually check your levels all over the place. Here it's a lot easier this way, I think. Just takes a bit of time just to set up your profiles. So this is gonna be a little harder. So what I do here is just put a little bit of mud in, in between, to scrape it on like that. Then, I just place a little bit of mud on the ends. Not too much. <sighs> okay. Okay, so then I just drop that into place, just like that. Thank you, George. Okay. Okay, so I'll just drop that in. Okay, so now I'll just place the brick on the opposite direction. Beautiful. Let's go down to the mark. Mud! Coming right up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is put some brick ties in here. 
Now you don't have to do this. I'm just choosing to be a little careful bit just to make sure that this structure is solid and holds together nicely. So I'm gonna put it on every single join. Bit of an overkill, but I'm just choosing to do that. Okay, that's on the mark. It's looking really good actually. Okay, so this is what they call a flush joint, just like that. Now, later when this dries, I'm gonna rake out some of that cement just to make a little bit of an indent. Uh, I think it looks better. My house is done that way and so is the other shrine. Uh, but there's also an iron finish where it's just a round edge. Uh, so you just put your iron through the joints and it just, all it does, it just creates a little bit of a curve. And it looks quite nice, but in this case, I'm doing a rake. Okay, so you may need to put a bit of water in this. Uh, if it's a bit thick, you don't want it to go too thick because it's not going to be malleable. Yep, beautiful. Now it's soft again. The guys are now just going to put some lucky stones around the edges and create a boundary, a border, just to, uh, to put some stones in here. Okay. Oh, that's looking great. Okay guys, only got one more course to go and we're finished the brick lane. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Nugget's got to go and uh, he's got some family commitments. Thanks guys, thanks Giuseppe. James hey, Lisa. George, thanks for helping, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. You're, it's gonna look great when it's finished. Definitely will. Thanks guys. Okay, so we ran out of battery, unfortunately, and uh, we weren't able to film the last course, but it is done. And so we charged back up. And so the next stage now is just to take all these profiles off. We'll just throw them out of the way. And uh, then I'm gonna cement the capping on. So it's a 500 by 500 capping, that's millimeters. And so we'll just cement that on. And so because we're running out of time, I'll ask uh, Giuseppe, who's also known as Joseph, to uh, grab some pebbles. Now, the pebbles I'm gonna use here are really nice pebbles from Cowra, and I got them from Lower Mountains Landscape Supply, and they're a great bunch of people, and if you're looking for a landscape supply, they are the best. Beautiful. Okay, so I have put some brick tires in here as well. Thanks, Joe. Mate, this is a good mix. Mm. Okay, so this capping is a 500 by 500. The pier is 475 by 475, so we need to give just enough room on either side. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so the capping's on. It's looking really good. Now the cement is almost dry. So now the next process, what I'm gonna do is rake the brick. Now there's different type of rakes you can use. Um, I generally use a homemade one. So this is what I usually use, which is a piece of timber, uh, not too long, about a foot, 300 mil long, and it has a nail in it. And so it's got a bullet head. And so uh, I would usually just use the, the nail to rake out like that. Now, but there is a tool that you can use, which is a proper bricklayer's raker. Okay, so what you do is just place it in and pretty much does the same thing, but it's on wheels. So the brand I'm using is Spear and Jackson. Uh, it's the first time I've used this brand. Um, it's working okay so far. So while I continue raking, Joe's gonna gather all the pebbles and just place them in this area. So I'm just brushing it all down, just get all the, the bits and pieces off, so it will be a bit flaky. Okay. 
the only thing we're going to do now is just silicon the statue onto the capping. Uh, so the stones have been done thanks to Joe, he's done a great job. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is just put a bead of silicon all the way around. Um, we, this is a fire prone area, uh, so if there's ever a fire, I do want to take this statue back off pretty quickly. It is a fiberglass polymer filled uh, statue. Uh, it is uh, for outdoors, but if a fire came through, it will damage it. So I'll just put the silicon on. Uh, the silicon I'm using is Selly's Roof and Gutter. I find Selly's a very good brand, uh, especially for silicon. So I'll just put a bead all the way around, not too thick, but thick enough. Okay, so we're gonna find the center, which is about there. We'll just let that sit for a sec. Okay, so it's done, it looks fantastic. So I'll let this silicon dry for 24 hours, just to make sure no one touches that. Um, so I did make a cover for this out of acrylic, so it's for external use, usually used for retractable awnings. So I've sewn it together, I've pattern made and sewn it, and I will put this on top, just to keep it clean from the birds and from uh, other am animals, and from the elements. Okay, so that's it, what do you think, Joe? No, we've done a great job, Moose. That's amazing what we can do only in a few hours. And, and thanks to uh, George. I mean, he was incredible. Uh, unfortunately, he had to run off. Um, but look, thanks very much. This is just, I couldn't do this on my own. There's just too much heavy lifting. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you. And I'd ask if you please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.